So good evening everyone. I'm very pleased to come back to New York, especially to the Inner Enlightenment Spiritual Society because I have so many special friends here and I would do my best to give this lecture in English because they obey me. <laughs> it's not my choice, but Fred always obey me. <laughs> so uh, I hope that this is gonna be okay. This it's a very controversial and very important topic, transsexuality from the viewpoint of the mortal spirit. I have been researching and studying for uh, the last 10 years at least. And um, in 2000, 2012, 2012, I presented this book, Homosexuality from the Viewpoint of the Mortal Spirit. At that point and that time, I intended to offer uh, and different kind of work to the spiritist movement. I noted that in this topic we had so many personal opinions and uh, uh, few uh, base, uh, scientific based opinions about homosexuality. So I proposed to the Medical Spiritist Association of Minas Gerais to make a, a, a deep study about the subject and to present a book integrating science, science and spirituality, bring them together in order to offer a different kind uh, of view based on science and also an inclusive point of view based on the spiritist proposals. And that's what I did. So, as I was aware that this was a very controversial and very um, sensible topic, I was very um, concerned about being scientific and being um, scientific and ba uh, based. So I made my research and I decided to use in the book all the scientific definitions about sexuality. And I did. When I present the book, I was quite um, satisfied with the result and I started doing lectures and seminars about this topic. When I was in London at the Spiritist Psychological Society, a very um, good Spiritist house in London, I presented this seminar and at the cough break a trans woman came to me and said like this, what is in this book is the thing that I have fight against for all my life. So I looked at her and I was shocked by this. I didn't realize at that time what she was talking about. Uh, she was a little bit confused and a little bit emotional. And uh, I, I asked myself wh what uh, I have put in this book that is so sensible for her. And then she didn't say more than this. And I, wa I went home and I started reading again my own book. I was very interested in discovering what uh, was so difficult for her to accept. And then I realized that I have uh, not committed the mistake, but I have uh, done exactly the thing that I was fighting against because as I, went, as I decide to be very scientific, I, ut I uh, utilize it. Yes. yes, I utilize it, the scientific definition, scientific definition for transsexuality. And at that point, transsexualism was defined as a identity disorder. So, I, I'm, a, I'm a physician, and I was making a study in the middle of the Medical Spiritist Association of Minas Gerais, which is part of the Medical Spiritist Associations from Brazil. So I had to be very um, scientific. So I, I used all the definitions from the DSM-4, which is the Manual of Diagnostic and Statistic 4. Nowadays we have the 5, and that has changed this definition, but at that time it was uh, a red um, it was still the four, and uh, the transsexualism was defined as a uh, disorder, an identity disorder. But 
when I use it, this definition, I um, was not very aware of how um, painful this could be for trans people. And then uh, that woman uh, opened my eyes to that, and then I start to study the trans reality, the identity reality. It's a different thing from what I, I was, um, was I, what I, I decided to study in this book. In this book, I decide to study the sexual orientation, and transsexuality is about sexual identity, which is quite different. One is the affection and the attraction. The other is the uh, psychic identity, what the people, what the person think and feel that uh, he or she are. So that's why I presented a, a whole new book five years later that is called Transsexualities, because we have many trans conditions, from the viewpoint of the immortal spirit. And that's what I'm talking about now. So today I'm going to speak a little bit about the trans conditions. And I'm very happy to do that. I'm very happy to present this book and to uh, talk to the trans people hearts right now. It was mainly for them that I wrote this book and uh, yeah, that's the background. So let's talk a little bit about the transgender and the spiritism. I start with Jesus. This scene is very uh, important for us this night because what Jesus did this moment was the same that we are trying to do right now. The woman at that time didn't have any social right, any value. The woman was designed to do domestic work or to stay with uh, the men, guided by men, uh, instructed by men, and uh, they could not vote, they could not take part into the spiritual learnings and uh, many other things. But Jesus that was a foreign, and the foreigns didn't talk to each other, talking to this woman, so he did uh, two different uh, and controversial things for the same time. He talked to a woman, and as a foreign, he uh, talked to another person from the other region, and uh, people did not accept that at that time. And at the border of the well, they talked about life. He asked her a little uh, glass of water and uh, she, uh, she was uh, a little bit scared about uh, what he was doing because she, was, she didn't know why a man decided to talk to her and why a man like him uh, asked her a glass of water and he, uh, and he teached her that if she knew who was the man that asked her water, she would ask him and he would give her the water of life. So this is a very beautiful message where Jesus uh, cross the boundaries of our prejudice and our statements to define uh, an effective connection between hearts. That's what he did all the time. He looked to the person, not to the condition. He looked to the experience and to the divine nature of that person that was in front of him. He was not concerned about the personality or not even to the emotional wounds that the, this person had. He naturally consoled every, every person by giving them uh, words of wisdom and words of love, but mainly he went to the very deep part of each and every person he touched to, this, to uh, invite the divine presence within to manifestate. And that's what we are talking about tonight. When we talk about gender identity, when we talk about uh, sexual 
affection or orientation, we are just talking about details. We are just talking about uh, uh, situations that we use it in our experience in matter. We are not talking about the essence. The essence is divine. And uh, it doesn't matter if we are incarnated this, like this or like that, we always have uh, the experience that we need in order to develop our divine nature. And, and that's the main point of my talk today. It's not to give answers about what exactly is the transgender experience uh, for someone. I, I don't have this answer because I'm not a trans people. I'm not a trans person, so I, do, I, I didn't live it, this experience in order to feel, in order to know what is the taste of being trans. I just can share with you what the trans people told me and what I, I've learned about it. But only a person can give uh, some sense or deep sense for his own experience. And that is very important because we Sometimes, in our prejudice, we want to give sense to other people's experience. We don't have this. We don't have to do it, and we don't have the ability to do it. Only the personal itself can uh, uh, give sense to an experience. That's, a, that's something important. So, what we are going to, to see here is some highlights about the psychological, scientific definitions and some knowledge about spiritism that can allow us to make an idea about this, okay? So, transgender people are seen uh, differently over different cultures. In some, they are saints. In others, they are uh, devils. So, this changes a lot. It depends on the culture, it depends on the, the, man, the way people express their trans conditions. So, for example, in India, the Ishiras are transvestites that are considered either sacred and um, part of the low level of society. So people look for them to have blessed, to, to be blessed by them, and also for prostitution. So they have these two conditions inside uh, of society. And the Ijeras usually are the first uh, child of uh, a family that are really separated to be a transvestite and to be a, to be a trans person at that specific culture. Yeah, so uh, you can uh, see, I, I put this in, the, in both books, you can see about it. So there's different ways to, to see the trans people. I have uh, read uh, many books about it. I want to share with you some of them. These ones are very good ones. All of them are available here in, in English. So I suggest you to get to know a little bit more deep about it, you can uh, research and you can uh, read this book. Some of them are scientific books, some of them are personal uh, biographies or uh, ideas that uh, people share about their own experience. And two of them are especially important for us tonight. One is this, Trans Bodies, Trans Selves, which are a book of definitions and it's a very, very good book. And the other is Raising Ryland, which, is, which I love. And it's a history of uh, uh, Hillary and the Whittington family and uh, their experience with his son, Ryland, that is a trans guy. Uh, and they had to start to, to manifest it as a trans um, boy with two years old. So I will share with you this. So I, I use it this because this is a resource for the transgender community edited by these two persons but uh, wrote, wrote by many, many hands. 
So let me start talking about uh, transphobia. Phobia is the fear, the deep fear of something. And trans is the trans condition. Trans conditions are the conditions where a person has a sexual, uh, a biological sex and another sex identity. So the sex identity is not uh, in tune with the biological sex. So a, a person that he were assigned the male uh, as at birth, and but it feels like a woman, and uh, a person that were assigned uh, was assigned uh, as woman, but uh, feel like a man. So trans conditions are all the conditions that we don't have this. A symphony between the sexual identity and the biological sex. Correspondence, right? correspondence yes, correspondence. So don't match. So, um, transphobia, it's a source of violence, and um, it comes from the words that we use to express this condition to the violence the the violence uh, that trans people face every day in their lives. Brazil, I don't know if you are aware of it, are the most violent country against LGBT persons. In Brazil, in every 26 hours, a trans person is assassinated by homo and transphobia especially the transvestites and the transsexuals that are at uh, the streets um, using the prostitution as the, their way of living. So we have a very, a very violent country. United States, around 26 of young homosexuals and much more transsexuals are excluded from home when they share with their relatives that they are homo or they are trans persons. And what destiny of these persons. They come to the streets and they start using drugs, they start uh, uh, prostituting, they start doing what we call the, the side of life, the ma marginal. Marginalized. Yeah, they start to be marginalized. And then we have a, a very deep source of violence in this situation because they were excluded from affection. And uh, unfortunately, these are true photographs that I use. And I, I decided to use real photographs in order to shock, in order for us to stop and think a little bit about it. Because you can think, ah, but Andre, you are talking about violence. I'm not violent against trans people. So this does not have anything uh, uh, with my life. This is not something personal to me. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And now all of us, we have uh, a percentage of responsibility in this social violence. Why? Because we, all people in humanity, we build the ideas that sustain this violence. Why trans people are so um, overwhelmed with this persecution in their daily lives? Especially because of machism. Machism. Sexism. Yeah, sexism yeah. is the same as machism. Yeah. No. Chauvinism. No. Chauvinism. 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 Yeah, okay. Uh, it's mainly due to chauvinism. Because men think that they are superior than women. And all the things that are... Um, similar to women are considered to be inferior. So why trans people are uh, persecuted? Why trans people are assassinated much more than homosexuals? And why the effeminate, effeminate homosexuals are assassinated much more than the male ones? The masculine ones, yes, the masculine ones. Why? Because people do not accept to a male guy to have the, the signs of the other sex. When a guy do this, 
he uh, is described as someone that uh, decides to give up the superiority or the apparent superiority of masculinity and also to, um, to take the characteristics of something that is inferior and is considered to be um, something bad. So when a guy see a trans woman, for example, and be violent with this trans woman, he's been violent against what? Against women, against... And um, the questioning uh, about uh, masculinity and uh, this kind of things that is involved in that experience. So that's why all the research shows that uh, people that persecute homo and trans people are those men at the end of uh, teenagers and the beginning of uh, adulthood and they uh, are aff trying to affirm, affirm their uh, masculinity um, and they try to do this in a very uh, sick way. So we have to think about it because when we do jokes, when we do um, piadas, yeah, jokes, jokes yeah. when we do jokes, when we do our commentaries, our sexist commentaries in our families, when we raise our children in a sexist way, we have been part of this social construction of violence. And that's very, very important. So look at this. This woman was assassinated by two or three men just by being a uh, transaction. So this is Viviane Belleboni, a trans woman, and she went uh, to the parade in 2015, and she stood on the cross for five hours to manifest the suffering of trans people that are not seen by our society. And this was very shocking for people in Brazil, not due to the suffering of, of trans people, but because it was considered like a outrage, like a, an offense. Blasphemy. Yes, a blasphemy, a very... Um, a sin. Yes, like a sin, because uh, how you, that are this, use the cross to compare yourself to Jesus. And that's what happened in Brazil. And, uh, and uh, it was a very deeper discussion about it. So, what are the definitions uh, about transgender? There's no one way to be transgender, say Holiday Simons. Transgender and gender non-conforming people, or trans people, we have many ways of understanding our gender identity, our inner sense of being male, female, both or neither. Some of us were born knowing that something was different about us, other of us slowly over time began to feel that we were not our full selves in the gender roles we had been given. So that's uh, an important thing. The trans persons realize that they are trans in different times. Some of them are aware about this uh, when they are children, but some of them just realize what uh, is the name of what they feel when they get teenage. Uh, and then they start to, to, um, to live in, with people that are trans and these people start to, to say what they, what, that uh, what they live, it's called transgender, it's called transsexuality, for, uh, for example. So, we have to understand that a person can have a male or a female identity, can have both, or can have none of them. Those who feel that they have both or have none, they are called queer. Queer, as you know, it's a, a term that were used at the past, in the past to um, offend homosexual persons. And uh, this, this term was taken by the LGBTI community in order to empower themselves as a community, so the trans people use to express 
the identity of those that uh, are not defined as a male or a female, they can feel that uh, they are uh, sometimes male, sometimes female, or they can, that they don't have any specific definition of gender. So queer is a term that is being reclaimed by many LGBTI people, and it is often used as an umbrella term for anyone who is not cisgender and heterosexual. What is cisgender? Cisgender is the person that the sexual identity matches with the biological sex. So, it doesn't matter what kind of sexual orientation this person has. It's not about sex orientation. It's about identity. So, homosexuals and heterosexuals are mainly cisgender. They have the same sexual identity and of the, their biological sex. People that do not have the same psychic identity of the biological sex are called trans people. Okay, that's the difference. But the queer are those who are not cisgender and not heter heterosexuals. Others of us use it, the term queer, as a political term that implies being radical and transgressive, separating ourselves from others LGBTI groups that seek more traditional forms of acceptance. This is something uh, important because the queer people, uh, they want to be uh, a little bit more radical than the, the, no, the common LGBTI community. And that's a source of um, conflict very frequently. Yes, I'm going to tell you. So, what happens with trans people? Trans people have something that it's called the gender dysphoria. And this is the um, actual definition of the DSM-5 the disorder of the identity disorder has disappeared from the manual and now we only have the gender dys dysphoria which means the suffering that the trans people have for a feeling that they do not belong to that biological sex and that they have a different uh, sexual identity from the biological sex this suffering varies uh, from little to uh, unbearable for those trans people. So, this is something very important. This is start on childhood. So, the trans child starts to feel that uh, they belong to another sex, that they do not feel comfortable using the the, the clothes of that sex they were assigned at birth. Uh, they do not feel comfortable to be treated as that gender. So this is called gender dys dysphoria. This can be expressed by the person to the society or this can be lived only within uh, without a, a social expression because this depends of the family, of the culture background, and so on. But this is always present in the trans people. It is a very deep source of suffering. So deep that 41% of trans teens try to commit suicide till 20 years old. Until 20, 20 years old. So this is a very high percentage. This is... Um, something that put people really at risk because they, were, they are not accepted, they are taken apart from home, from their affections, from opportunities because they cannot study, they cannot have a job, they cannot have a social uh, expression and so they live alone this kind of suffering and this is something uh, really aggressive. So, in Brazil, 80% of trans people leave school due to 
transphobia into to this, uh, this inner dysphoria. I talked to many trans people to write this book and one of them told me every day I need to get out of the school with the director otherwise I would be beaten, beaten by the other guys that try to, to, to reach me with stone every day. So can you imagine you have to wait the director each and every day to leave school otherwise you can be beaten by someone else only because you are yourself only because you are not that kind of thing that he or she wants to see in you just because you have something a mark that shows that something from uh, that masculinity or that femininity is questioned is uh, um, challenge but that expression so this is a big and deep suffering so these people does not have the opportunity I had a prejudice I usually think at um, the, uh, the past why these people always prostitute why we always see them at the streets why the transvestites are always at the prostitution yes of course this was a prejudice because I have never talked to someone to see what was their experience and I was, I was judging them by my own experience. What I was questioning was why they have a different kind of life if I suppose that they have the same life I had. But this was not true. They do not have the same life I had. They have so many more opportunities that they had. So when I start talking with them, I notice that they do not have opportunity to study, they do not have the affection of family, and many of them sent to the streets by their affections were welcomed only by those who were at the prostitution. So they just went to the same way they were learning to go. They do not believe that they could have an uh, other uh, reality and other uh, destination than that that they see over there. They were received by them in their house. So, so let's talk a little bit about the eye. What is the eye that is always invisible and ignored? On the on the on this mark, how do you Yes, on this abbreviation, is the intersex people. Intersex is a general term used for a, vari a variety of conditions in which a person is born with a reproductive, reproductive or sexual anatomy that doesn't seem to fit the typical definitions of female or male. So. The intersex were, as, were called hermaphrodites at the past. So this is a term that we do not use anymore. This is a, uh, a term that's considered to be a prejudice. Also the term transvestite. Today we say trans woman or trans people and uh, intersex. So intersex can be uh, an anatomic situation so a person can be born with uh, um, an undifferentiated um, anatomy, sexual anatomy, that you don't know if it is a male or a female. So is in the between of the sex, that's what he called intersex, or it can be just a uh, variety of um, genes. So the person cannot have, can have a, an, a, not a normal, but a, something that seems to be normal anatomically, but has a different, differentiated uh, genes determination. So these are the conditions. So how many conditions? More than 40 conditions. So we have many intersex conditions. The, most people just discover that they are intersex at the teenagers. 
or at the adulthood when they start to, to be, for, for example, uh, in, they start to face, for example, infertility or uh, other things like that. And so they make um, tests and they realize that they are intersex, for example. So one very, very famous intersex and transsexual woman in Brazil is Dione Freitas. She was raised as a man, but she's a woman and she is an intersex woman. So she had the, both conditions. Uh, fortunately for her, uh, the intersex condition was discovered when she became teenage and then uh, she had uh, the right to receive the medical treatment that uh, naturally is not allowed to trans people uh, and this a, a big difficult for trans people to uh, receive but she could receive because she is intersex so as a medical condition she had the right to receive hormones and so on and she shared with us her history in a very instructive interview so this interview is, is, is in this book the whole interview that she gave for a, a website but uh, I had the authorization to, to put the interview at the book and this was uh, a present for me because I, um, I got to know this woman last Friday in Curitiba I was in Curitiba last Friday I gave this lecture in Portuguese <laughs> in Brazil in Curitiba and then she was there and then I invite her to give the lecture with me and we gave the lecture together and it was a powerful uh, moment and situation I was very very touched by her experience because he shared with love with kindness with sensibility she does not have something that is very common in trans people there is an aggressive posture that is developed by being always uh, aggressive uh, yes like a defensive way because they are always aggressive but she had a different uh, situation in her life, so uh, something went different from for her. And then uh, I opened two questions and answers. I changed all my lecture because uh, I talked, she talked, and we comment, and it was a, a very good situation. It was recorded and to be uh, the YouTube soon, uh, so you can see. And uh, someone asked her, why did you support so many aggressions in your life because she told us that when she passed in the, at the streets people want to hit her people could spit. spit on her people beat her and so someone asked how are you support it and she said I forgive it and then someone asked her why you forgive that what give you support at the early times for you to forgive and she was a little bit embarrassed but she said my faith my, faith. my faith and then they asked her but what specifically give you support and so she said oh I'm gonna tell you something that I have never told uh, publicly but uh, here I feel comfortable to to share with you I had all the time during my childhood and during the teenagers I had uh, with me a spiritual presence and I could see the spirits and I could uh, talk with them and specifically one grew with me and whenever everyone told was telling me that you are not worth it that God do not love you he said to me no that's not true God love you a lot the way you are the way you are you are very accepted by God and you need to forgive just have patience and forgive and she said that every time this guide told her to forgive to support and he told her one day your life will be a reference and you will 
welcome other people with the same conditions in order to give them the love you are receiving now. And she said to the audience, now I'm doing. Now this has started. Now I decide to share my history and people are coming to me and now I have the ability and the opportunity to do that. It's a very, very impressive woman and uh, I was very touched in my heart by uh, her experience. So, wait for this, uh, this lecture that will be soon in YouTube. So, let's have a resume of all the situation. The, the genderbred person is <laughs> fantastic. So, what is identity? Identity is something psychic. Identity is not defined by our biological sex. Biological sex is something defined by our genes. So, people usually say that trans people do uh, sex change. No, we never do sex change. People born with one sex and die with the same biological sex. But what we call sex, it's not only the biological sex. It is is the sexual identity and the sexual identity is not defined by only biology is defined by so many other things so it's different the biological sex and the sexual identity as identity people can feel that they are man woman or they are non-binary what is called the gender queer or the gender fluid it's all the term to use it to define this. As a gender expression, people can be feminine, masculine or androgynous. That means that people can choose, and that's the choice, to express their sexuality the way they want. They can change clothes, they can change the, the, the appearance, they can change, this is the expression. Expression is how we behave, how we show what we feel. So people can have an identity and express in different ways. The same way that men and women express their masculinity and their femininity in many different ways. So biological sex can be male, female or intersex. And sexual orientation, it's something connect the affection into the sexuality. People can be heterosexual, homosexual, bisexual, or pansexual. Pansexual is the same as bisexual, but includes the non-binary and the genderqueer persons. So someone that is defined in its sexual orientation as pansexual, it's attracted not only by male or female, but also by the, for the non-binary persons. That's the difference between pan and bisexual, okay? Just definitions. So, this is something to know by heart, okay, people? <laughs> yeah, that's very important. If you do not understand that, you do not understand the whole yeah. other things. But you cannot see a person and, and imagine what this person is. And, and we are too yes. embarrassed to ask the person. We need to ask. Huh? We need to ask. Yeah. yeah. If you do not know if the gender expression of that person is androgynous, and if you don't know the, no the name of that person, we, have to, we need to ask, her, what's your name? What's if the that? name is an androgynous as well, <laughs> we need to ask, her, how do you refer to yourself? So as, okay to as, it's not okay, it's, it's a need. It's more than okay, they it's a need. They feel that they are respected when you do that. That means, how do you want to be called? How do I refer to you? How do you refer to yourself? I want to treat you with respect. I pay respect to your gender identity, to a, to a sexual expression. How do I refer to you? So that is important. When you do not know, the name always give a clue. But if you do not know the name, we ask people for this, okay? Because the sexual recognition, the social recognition, it's something very important <laughs> for trans people. And that's something that are not, uh, given to them the right to be treated as they want. 
So they have a name that they, they choose it in accordance to their gender identity, and people um, try uh, and people treat them as they are uh, with the, the sex they are assigned at the document or the biological sex. So this is not okay. This is not good. Yeah, this is a disrespect. You want? Because um, they usually there is even a show, um, very well known show here in the US that they usually say the pronouns. So there is this character that goes to the boss and the work comes in and says, um, my pronouns are they, they, uh, they we, them. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. yeah, this is the gender queer. Yeah, the genderqueer refer to themselves as they. Yeah, they. It's a, uh, it's very difficult, and uh, they use the, uh, they use the, the letter, X, to refer to the sex. So, uh, in Portuguese, for example, uh, instead of saying, todas, we say. Oh. Oh. Like this. Mm -hmm. So the the X. Uh, um, is the replaces the, the replace the yeah. letter that express the gender. sex the gender yes yes exactly it's genderless is it, it <laughs> I don't know it's just for it's just for the right yeah I have seen people um, people saying but um, for me, it was quite similar to todas. Then um, it's uh, something difficult for the the speech. It's uh, it's more for the right. Okay. Uh, uh, is it correct to say that none of this then is a choice, and then also like the sex is biological, right? But is the orientation and identity also like how is that? Stuff? Also what? Uh, so uh, the first question is, uh, so none, is it correct to say that none of this is a choice, right? The only choice here is expression. Oh, okay, the expression. Yeah. And, and is the orientation and identity uh, biological or is it from the soul or is, is there any... Both. Okay. Yeah. For us, in spiritism, always come from the soul, from the spirit that we are. But we, but the biological... Uh, reality has an, uh, an expression on it, but the biological expression for the spirit is um, directed by our spiritual situation, our spiritual conditions. So we will reach there. So now I'm gonna go a little bit fast because I have already uh, talked about this. So the transsexuality is being understanding, is being a understood by uh, other point of views nowadays and the DSM-5 has changed the definition from gender, uh, gender disorder to gender dysphoria and uh, the CD-11, the International Code of Disease, ICD in English 11 that uh, it's about to come next year it seems that the transsexuality will disappear from it so we are living this very special moment that the homosexuality has already lived in, in the 70s when the term homosexualism was taken away from these definitions and uh, it was only con con started to be considered as a sexual orientation, normal, normal, sexual orientation, normal, because nothing is normal, and everything is normal. Yes, normal is not a definition for things. Normal is defined by norms, and norms change. It depends if uh, Obama is president or Trump. <laughs> it depends if uh, we think this or that. It, uh, norms change every time, so nothing is normal. All of these are natural, it's different. Natural is part of the nature, and it doesn't seem it's good, neither it's uh, bad, it's neutral. We do good or bad things with all, uh, all these situations and conditions that uh, we live. 
So transgender people are not mentally ill. So the pathologization of transgender people. So the challenges are the social recognition and social name. The use of bathrooms is a very deep problem because trans people do not feel comfortable to use the bathroom of the gender they were assigned for when they do, are not allowed to use the bathroom of the, their sexual identity. And they are not allowed because the cisgender people uh, see that like, a, like a, an offense uh, with suspicious. And uh, they do not realize that the fear that they have to be violated by someone in the, uh, in the bathroom is the same situation that they make the trans people live to live without uh, authorizing them to, um, to use the bathroom of their sexual identity. So this is a uh, difficult. This one is a, uh, an inclusive bathroom. We don't care, it's, a, it's awesome. That seems everyone can use this bathroom. It's an unisex bathroom. If you are talking about adults, this is not something, uh, it's not a big deal. The problem is when we talk about children and the schools. That's what uh, it's the, uh, seems to be the big discussion about it and uh, the thing that they call it se uh, gender ideology which is something controver very controversial um, what seems to be to me very um, right is that we have to discuss gender with children we have to teach them the difference that we have in our society we have to teach them diversity and this does not happen in our schools. So, when we do not teach them to respect diversity, we teach them to be sexist. And that's the background of the violence. So, transition is the term uh, of the change that trans people make in their bodies in order to become more in tune with their sexual identity. When I presented the book, Homosexuality, I used it to um, define the transvestite as persons with a little gender dysphoria that do not want or need to make transitions in their body, to make the sexual reassignment, which is called the surgery of, of ch sex change, it's called sexual reassignment, and uh, the trans people were that those who need uh, to make changes and uh, to make the sexual reassignment and uh, with a big uh, sexual, a big gender dysphoria. This was the right definition at that time, but it's not anymore. And this has changed. Because many trans people do not want to make changes in their bodies. They start to accept in that, uh, that duality men and women in, a, in the, at the same body. Uh, as, the, as the trans identities become more known in our society, more trans people start to accept themselves as they are and start to be recognized and respected by what they are and do not feel the deep need to change their bodies. Some of them need very strongly and they need to, to change their life, their, their body in order to, to feel uh, comfortable in their own body. So nowadays, transvestites are considered trans women and we do not use the term transvestite anymore, okay? So the trans people can have different levels of gender dysphoria, the trans people can make transitions or not, they can decide if they need, if they want, if they have access to it, if they want to, to fight to, to have this right. In Brazil, people can do sexual reassignment or the other surgeries uh, for free, but they have to wait on the list for 20 years. 
19. So 20. Wow. So that means that they don't do. Yeah. They, uh, they, they don't do uh, or they have the money to do for uh, private or they don't do. That's what happens in Brazil. So this is one trans men. So how we call them? We call them men and women. That's something very important. Men and women are not defined by biological sex. So we call them men or women. If we need to manifest the trans condition, we say trans men or trans woman. Okay? So this is a trans man. He took uh, the hormones and uh, he is a uh, one of the most known uh, trans guys here in the United States. Um, so people need the psychological care to, to deal with the gender dysphoria, to deal with the, um, the society. And the sexual reassignment only feel of them though, thus, because uh, and Uh, I don't know exactly if it's only because of the, the access, um, but uh, mainly also because of the price and also because of the, the techniques that are still uh, being improved. So that, that's what happens. So I have talked about it. This is one uh, very known uh, trans, trans man in uh, Brazil, João Neri, in the United States, Thomas Beatty. He got pregnant because he uh, married a woman that was un, um, infectious. infectious. Not fertile? Sterile? Sterile. was a sterile. And then he, he took uh, his breast. He did not took his ovaries and his um, uterus. So he got pregnant. He was a man pregnant. So if you have never thought that a man could be pregnant, now you know that yes, a man can be pregnant if he is a trans man. So we have, um, we have many. When I did the research to know about this, I saw many, many, many pictures on the internet. So many trans men, but he faced uh, a strong prejudice because many doctors um, refused to, to give him attention considering him a, a, a aberração. A freak, yeah. Considering him a freak and uh, he suffered a lot. But actually, he had three pregnancies and he... Uh, three. And he got three very beautiful kids. It's a very normal couple. They are still divorced. <laughs> Very normal, yeah, they got divorced. <laughs> so, they had this these three children, and uh, what I always say to spiritists is, well, God doesn't know that was a trans father. Where was the Department of Reincarnation at that time <laughs> that prepared that? So I think we need to open our minds and our hearts to realize that the diversity of life allow us different kind of experience. So these are three children reincarnated in a situation that they have a trans man as a father, a woman, a cisgender woman, and they had another father that donated the sperm in order to have the fertilization. So this is a trans family. What we can understand under the point of view of the Spiritist doctrine. So these are the base that we use to understand all kinds of situation. The idea of reincarnation is the concept that we evolve through time from the simplicity and ignorance to the perfection and as a as spirits, as divine beings, we are uh, immaterials. 
So we use the, mat the matter to evolve, to have experience, to grow. So we reincarnate in order to evolve, in order to progress, in order to have the experience that we need to develop the divine nature within. The immortality of the soul is a reality. We are not the body that we live in. We are the spirits, and as spirits we do not have gender. As spirits we do not have any specific sex. We experience a sex, we experience a gender, we experience a time. But as spirits we grow with the experience that we have. The divine laws guide all this process. The law of justice, the law of mercy, the law of progress, the law of um, many laws that are discussed and presented by the Spiritist book. The cause and effect is a very important one. And this law tells us that we face the consequence of each and every choice we have. As we have the ability to make choice, we have the responsibility to face the consequence of our choices. So, as a son of God, we spirits are divine creations. These are the bases. I'm not a child. I'm a child of God, right? Child. A child, yeah. Yeah, a child of God. Not only a son. Because I'm a male. <laughs> That's why it is a son of God. Because <laughs> I did. <laughs> It's an egoic thing. <laughs> it's not a sexist thing. <laughs> it's a child of God, exactly. So, in the question 2002 of the Spirit's book, Allan Kardec asks, when we are spirits, do we have a preference as to whether we will incarnate into a male or a female body? The answer of the spirits are, yes. It matters little to the spirit. It depends on the trials it must undergo. This is very important to understand. We choose the gender, we choose the family, we choose the time, we choose the society, the experience we need to have in order to what kind of spiritual experience we must undergo. That means what kind of things that we have to develop within, what kind of to features that we have to achieve, what kind of affective, emotional and intellectual experience we have to face in order to understand the law of God, which is something from our consciousness, and to feel the law of God, what is an affective approach to God by our spiritual development. So that's what guides us in order to decide what kind of gender, what kind of experience we need to have. So, Alanka, so Andrea Luis and Emmanuel, through the psychography of Chico Xavier, Xavier, uh, told us about the inversive conditions. What are inversive conditions? It's a term that they utilize that refers to Freud's definition. Freud used these terms to define the homosexuals. He called the homosexuals as person with inversive conditions. When I start to research the mediunic data for this book, I couldn't find anything specifically about uh, transsexuality. One or other uh, quotation, but I noted that all the answers about homosexuality could explain the transsexuality as well, and some of them explain much better the transsexuality than the homosexuality. So I propose that uh, the spiritual nature of this experience lived in the sexual and the different sexual orientation or the different sexual identity are uh, the same but in different levels of need for the spirit. So let's talk about it. For example, in the book Life and Sex, Emmanuel say, the men who abused the, the sexual faculties, ruining other people's lives with the destruction of many homes and construct, construct, 
construction unions in many cases is driven to seek a new position rebirth in a morphological female body and will learn as if under a prison system to readjust his own feelings as well as the woman who acted similarly is driven driven or driven? driven? driven is driven to reincarnate in a morphologically male body with the same purpose this is a test about this is a a, a, a right about the transsexuality or the homosexuality? No, it's much more understood by transsexuality than homosexuality. But it's an expl explanation about homosexuality. But you, we need to, to understand something very important. We, in the spiritist movement, we confuse terms. And there's, a, confu uh, and there's a, a source of confusion in this book, Life and Sex. This chapter starts with a wrong definition. In this chapter, the first uh, sentence of this chapter is the homosexuality, also called the transsexuality for the science. This is wrong. Homosexuality and transsexuality are very different things. Maybe when Emmanuel wrote, there was some confusion about terms, and this is there. But the um, publisher should uh, make a note or take off of the book, but none has done that. So that's a source of confusion. And people also always confused sexual orientation and sexual identity in the spiritist movement. When we See, this test, we confuse much more. So that's why I think that we are talking about uh, the same spiritual situation in different kinds of things. For one, express with uh, only at the sexual orientation, for others, as identity. But who suffers more? The homosexuals or the transsexuals? The trans people. The trans people suffer much more than homosexuals yeah. because a homosexual can uh, not accept himself, can, have a, a, can uh, need a time to accept itself, but can hide that for ev from everyone. A trans person no, can't. frequently cannot uh, hide this from anyone and suffer a lot because of it. So when he, he tells here about prison system, who is in prison system? Homosexuals or transsexuals? Transsexuals are much more in prison system than homosexuals. Because someone that do not uh, feel that the, his or her identity match with the biological sex is the trans person and not the homosexuals. Homosexuals has, don't have a, a, a gender dysphoria. The, ma the majority of homosexuals does, doesn't have uh, gender dys dysphoria. So, I think that this kind of situation talks about uh, the whole things. What Emmanuel is telling here? He's telling that when someone notes that he has to learn something deeply, he asks to leave that situation that he has abused. So, if someone has lived an abuse in the sexual area or the affection area, he, decide, he or she decides to incarnate in a situation that gives to him or to her uh, experience to build the self-esteem, to build the respect of that sex, to build the, res the respect of the uh, affectivity, to build the respect of sex, of, of um, relationships. So this can be lived with a different sexual orientation or a different sexual identity. So that depends on the level that the person needs or the situation that the person has built inside of her or has cho chosen for that uh, specific incarnation. And this changes for every person. This is something that we cannot say 
that is a, a, re, a receipt. Como que se chama receita? Recipe. It's not a recipe. It's something always personal. Just everyone. Uh, I may have misunderstood the definition, but you say that the trans suffers more than the homosexual. Yeah. But wasn't the trans a choice that he made to, to transform his body to be more in tune to his psyche? Yes. After, so uh, after 15 years of suffering. After, okay, after the <laughs> suffering. Yeah. Someone uh, got to the. He, trans he goes and he makes the option for be to become a transsexual. He's going to be happy and with the body he, he chose, with the gender he chose. When when he changes. When he changes. Yes. When a uh, when a uh, a trans person comes to transition, so yeah, to transition to the gender that he is. Uh, yeah, not a trend, not the gender that he chose it, but the gender that he realized that he is. It's not a choice. It's something that uh, it's uh, preserved by the person that his very own uh, gender. So he became more uh, in peace with okay, himself. So the suffering is in the process while he was yeah. still yeah before, before mainly before and during the process because this process is very painful. Okay. It's very painful because the surgeries and the access and the situations. So all of this involves a, a high level of suffering. Guys, let's, let's let Andre keep talking because he still has a... I think you still have a few slides to go, right? Yeah. Okay. And then we can ask questions in the end. Okay. Just because of the time that we have. So this is the same quotation. I want to allow you to read because you need to buy the book. <laughs> so... No, it's because it's the same thing. And uh, you, this is a, this is a team, is a subject to study. This is not something that just to, to be informed. So I, I really suggest you that are interested in this subject to study the book. It's not a book to read, it's a book to study. It's a book to got to know the definitions, to got to know the, the quotations that are connected to the subject and have your own um, Conclusions, yes. So here, instructed Felix sh showed that innumerable spirits reincarnated in many reversed conditions, be, be it in the field of struggles of atonement or in obedience to a specific task that require harsh discipline by those who request to accept them. He also indicates that men and women can be born homosexual or intersexual. It's very interesting that they refer to intersexuals, a being who has organs of both sex, as they are likely to take the physical body in the condition of being mutilated or inhibited in certain fields. There are another situation that the people that are mutilated, uh, adding that the soul reincarnates in this or that circumstance to improve and perfect itself and never under the destination of evil, which compels us to recognize that crimes, wherever they are in any position, run on our own behalf. That means every person is uh, reincarnated to live divine purposes. So, whenever we decide for the evil, being this or that, this run for our own uh, choice and our own decision. But, I ask you, these are only a choice of, pe of trans people, or this is something that society compels them to, to live? Because imagine yourself in a situation that you have not the acceptance of your family, that you have to leave home in the early age, sometimes at the beginning, at the end of the childhood, at the beginning of the teenage, that you do not study, so you have not opportunity to learn, to instruct yourself, to work, to have 
your own support. So, what would you would do in that situation? The same as they do. Probably the same as they do. They do. So that's something very important for us to understand that we have a, a responsibility with the trans community, with the trans people. We have to look for them. We have to take care of them. You have to welcome them. We have to give opportunity to them. We are not doing that. How many trans people you have already seen in the spiritist movement? How many trans speakers? How many trans directors? I know some. But they cannot tell that they are trans. Because they have fear of being excluded from the spiritist movement. There were a time that homosexuals were not accepting the spiritist groups to give passes, to give speeches, to direct. This has changed, thanks God. Otherwise, the spiritist movement would be at least a half of the <laughs> works that we have today. Yeah. Because homosexuals have been doing a, a very good job as heterosexuals does the same. But today, those who face prejudice in the middle of the spiritist movement are the trans people. So we have to understand uh, these situations and to uh, have to, uh, to welcome them. Because religion is the house of love. And who is the director of our spiritist groups? Who is the one that guides our spiritist groups? Jesus. It's Jesus. We are directed of a directors of a Jesus work. And this work is guided by the gospel. The gospel is the rule. And the gospel says to us, love unconditionally. Opportunities to everyone. Welcome everyone console and instructions to everyone consolation so that's why what we need to give to people an opportunity to understand themselves under the immortality of the soul the ideas of reincarnation of uh, evolution and so on so we need to think about it it's very important for us. The transgender family, it's another kind of family that we need to accept, to embrace, and to love. So this is Ryland, the trans guy that was born and were assigned female at birth. And uh, he was deaf. And by the age of two, he uh, got um, an, an implant and he started hearing. And his, his mom said that uh, at the first uh, word he said was, I'm a man. <laughs> because every situation, every uh, act was to say that he do not felt comfortable in a female expression, in a female um, body. So many children have gender dysphoria have gender dysphoria does not seem that a children is trans. The, the vast majority of children that has gender dysphoria changes along the time. So what is the characteristics of trans people? They have a permanent, a congruent and a persistent gender dysphoria. Does not change over time it happens and in, in is expressed in every situation. It has uh, a lot of suffering uh, when they are treated by the, the sex that were assigned. That was the characteristic that makes a children a trans children. This does not change. It's a big level of suffering. And it's a big level of uh, naturality when it's treated as the other identity. Uh, so psychologists 
say that we need to, to know what kind of roupas uh, íntimas. Uh, underwear, yes. What kind of underwear or, or what kind of uh, clothes to swim these children <coughs> like to use? Because uh, trans, trans persons often need to use the underwear and the clothes uh, yes, uh, of the gender that they have in their identity. So this is a, a clue, it's not a something that define, but it's a very strong clue that they, they use in order to say that a trans, that a person is trans. I highly suggest you, strongly suggest you to read this book. It's available on Amazon, Raising Ryland, our story of parenting a transgender child with no strings attached. And this family, it's amazing. They are a Protestant family, so they had a big difficult to see that what was happening with their children, uh, with their son, was a, a trans phenomena. They thought that was a problem of education, that was something uh, like child uh, jokes and they got to know the trans reality and they became trans um, pessoas que lutam activists, activists. trans activists uh, and you can find them uh, especially Hillary Whittetum in Facebook and she is a very amazing woman they live uh, in, the, um, in California in San Diego area so Emmanuel Humanity will gradually learn to understand that the concepts of normality and abnormality fall short in the case of morphological signs alone and may rise up as more sublime agents of definition of human dignity since individuality itself either intensifies community life through their behaviors in the support of the common good or depresses it for the evil that it causes together with the role it plays in the game of delinquence. So that means normal or abnormal is to be in tune or not with the goodness. That is what Spiritism called normal or abnormal. It's not a morphological sign. It's not an identity sign. It's not a orient sexual orientation sign. It's about behavior. It's about inner decisions. It's about how we do and what we do in our lives. That's the m most uh, important things. So I end with Jesus again, the chief, the master. And he is our reference. And he is the one, the shepherd. Yeah, he's the shepherd. He took care of everyone and that's what he invites us to do. So, what I think we should do? I don't think we should welcome trans people in the Spirit Center. This is a duty. I think we should go to the streets and look for them. I think we should go there to say that you are welcome here, that we have a place of love in our hearts for you that you accept the way you are, that you can come with your gender expression the way you like to be, that we are not concerned about how you express. We are here to love, to give you support. We are here to have an opportunity of, for you to give job, to give uh, a spiritual opportunity. What do we have to do? to? What we have to, to do for them. When I decided to write this book, the third thing I, I, I did was to give a job for a trans people. A trans person. Because I thought, I cannot leave this and say something without having this experience. So, in our publisher, we give a, a space for a trans person. 
and it was something very the first one that come to me at that very week I and uh, it came to me because he wanted to commit suicide so he came to my office asking for help someone wrote me an email asking me if I could uh, welcome uh, someone and I said yes so he came to my office to be treated as a dep depressed person and I said to him no I'm not I will only I will not only give you antidepressive drugs this of course you need and other things to support you but uh, what you need is to know that here you have an opportunity for you that here you have a place and person that will accept and treat you as you are and you will help you in order to accept yourself and to treat yourself the way you are and so we all cry together that's what we need to do I beg your pardon if I tell a personal experience uh, as reference because I'm not reference to nothing but what I want to say here is that we need to go through them we need to find them, we need to say to them that they are welcome, that we have something to give to them. Few people in the spiritist movement are doing jobs, are doing specific spiritual works for trans community. So what I let you think is what we have been doing for this community. What can we do? what they want, what they need, what we have to offer. When we face Jesus and Jesus asks us as, as, as disciples, what special you do? What kind of different thing as a Christian you do in, our, in your society? What difference you make in people's life? We are just people that laugh for the trans people during a parade or we are a welcome heart that want to embrace the trans people and say to them welcome, let's learn together, let's grow together, let's have an opportunity together. So we shall thinking about it and we shall feel more than think this deeply because this is the posture that we have to learn to be shepherds as well and to welcome people with the love Jesus teach and give us the testimony okay so questions <laughs>